Today on Tabletop News, MCDM breaks the backer kit one day record with over $2 million in 24 hours. Plus, we take a look at some lesser known tabletop events coming up in 2024. And in this week's Beyond the Table, we take a trip to the San Luis Obispo Library and discover it's not just books at the library anymore. All of that and more on your official stop for all things tabletop. I'm JPG. And I'm Xander Janare. This is Tabletop News. Let's, Let's roll. roll. Today's episode is brought to you by Swagbucks. Download Swagbucks now to start earning real cash for free by playing mobile games. It's no secret that massive companies like Amazon have forced smaller companies to adapt or die. And that's just as true in the board game space as any other. In a recent interview with Board Game Wire's editorial staff, Cool Stuff Inc. founder Jerry Sunken spoke about competing with Amazon in the online retail space. One of the main issues cited by Sunken was shipping and fulfillment. Amazon has its own shipping and logistics infrastructure, allowing them to ship products at incredibly low costs compared to smaller retailers like CSI. While struggling to keep up with Amazon, Amazon in the online board game market, Sunken noted that it wasn't simple market forces making it difficult to compete. According to Sunken, his team believes that Amazon was specifically targeting Cool Stuff Inc. Sunken said, we'd put a board game up for just some weird price. Within an hour, Amazon would have the exact same price with a better shipping option than we can provide. All of this resulted in the surprise September 2023 announcement from Cool Stuff Inc that they would be leaving the board game market to focus on collectible card games, where profits were more generous and the competition not quite as fierce. Right on the heels of that announcement, news broke that the Federal Trade Commission was suing Amazon for quote, anti-competitive and unfair strategies to illegally maintain its monopoly power, end quote. Not everyone in the board game market believes that Amazon is playing a rigged game. Jared Rowden of Game Nerds and Simon Budd of Zatu Games have both spoken out in support of Amazon, saying that competition and innovation are just part of doing business. Hey Xander, apropos of nothing, remember that time we covered our friendly local game store, Geeky Tees? Oh yeah, it's a happy place. That was amazing. Speaking of better days, MCDM RPG just had the largest first day finish in Backer Kit's history. They reached $2.9 million in funding with an initial $800,000 funding goal. MCDM Productions is Matthew Colville's company and they do a little bit of everything, from a hit TTRPG focused YouTube channel to actual plays to RPG supplements, they're a powerful force in the space. MCDM has a history of transparency in their business practices that has earned them a great deal of trust in the tabletop community. They are known for their excellent working conditions in an industry rife with worker woes. They have a history of competitive rates and strong benefits for their workers. They are open about their freelance rates and don't require NDAs. It's no wonder the tabletop community has rallied around MCDM's latest project. It's definitely a business model that breaks a lot of the traditions for game companies. It's possible that their success could encourage others to make changes in how they interact with their workers. This is no overnight success story. The success of the MCDM RPG comes after years and years of building trust, producing quality content, and being a part of the community on a variety of levels. Speaking of communities, speaking of segues, God, I love you. Aww. We took a road trip to Central California this week to meet with Sally Laporte, a youth services librarian in San Luis Obispo, to hear how they're helping make gaming accessible to the community through their board game initiative. I'm Sally Laporte, and I am a San Luis Obispo County Librarian, and we are at the Slow Branch Library. Well, I am a board gamer, and I follow a lot of gaming pages on Facebook, and I noticed that a lot of them were talking about how their libraries have board games. And so I brought it up to administration, and I said, is this something that we could consider? And they said, absolutely, get us a game list. And we started putting it into play about three months ago, and games started circulating in November. People can go into any branch and put a hold, which means they can order the game and it'll be sent to them. They can check out the games for three weeks at a time and they can have two at a time. Right now we have 75 games. Hopefully we will be purchasing new games as we go along. Currently there are holds on many, many of the games. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this is something that will grow through the years. 
One thing about board games is that they're really expensive. It breaks my budget if I want to play everything that I want to try. So when I was seeing online that all these libraries were checking out board games to people, I thought that is such a great thing for people to have. Be able to play a game, see if you like it before you buy it. How perfect is that? So it really helps everybody who has a library card. And that's all you need is a library card. Board games are really important for all sorts of skills, especially building language and literacy skills. Also, just taking time, being away from screens and being with other people and interacting socially is really important, and I think this is a good way to help encourage people to do that. If you are interested in seeing board games available at your library, I strongly suggest contacting a librarian or someone in administration. Libraries might not even be thinking about this as a possibility, so definitely get in touch with your local library to see what they can do to help you out. So if you are in San Luis Obispo or any of the surrounding cities around here, our Slow County Library has 14 branches. Come to one of them and visit. Say hello and um, check out the Board King collection. I wish my library had board games when I was a kid. Yeah, then I probably would have learned how to read. And not the books. Not the books. Huh. For our next story, Xander is going to list every single tabletop gaming event coming up in 2024. Xander, take it away. Oh, how about I just list a few interesting ones so we aren't here all day? Let's start with the Tabletop Creator Summit on May 24th during MCM Comic Con London. The summit is hosted by Dicebreaker for designers, publishers, and other members of the tabletop industry. The first summit featured a lot of behind the scenes topics like crowdfunding, manufacturing, and marketing, and they're trying to expand into even more topics relevant for anyone interested in the business side of making games. I see your summit and raise you a dual convention. Midwest Game Fest just wrapped up their online fall convention last week on December 10th, and they're hosting an in-person convention in April 2024. Wait, I thought Midwest Game Fest had their in-person convention in the fall and the online event was in the spring. It used to be, but they flipped the script this year. <laughs> Believe it or not, it was to avoid scheduling conflicts with the NFL. Taylor Swift's NFL? Taylor Swift's NFL. Now shut up and sit down! How dare! Oh, no, no, it's a podcast, and they host a convention called Shucks in Vancouver. Well, they didn't in 2023 due to a lingering budgetary issues that started back in 2020, but they have announced that they're already planning for a 2024 event. They have a board game-focused YouTube channel with reviews and Let's Plays, and they have a similarly game-focused podcast. The convention will be full of community, game demos, and game playing! So many events, so little time. Speaking of so little time, Segway. Uh. Uh. More information has come out on Climatopia, a new game created by students and faculty at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, which asks, can gaming help raise awareness of climate change? Alongside their technical writing team, Professor Rachel Willis, Sidney Thomas, and Alex Pistiolis have developed Climatopia to be not just a game, but a force to help children of all ages explore varying aspects of climate change and its influence on the future. Develop the development of Climatopia began in 2019, and its mission is to build more resilient communities through teaching strategies and offering resources to help with natural disasters. In the game, you roll a die and progress along a board. On the way to Climatopia, you must answer quiz questions on climate-enhanced disasters, collect resources, and use your resources and character's superpower to prevent natural disasters. There are three regions on the board, coastal, rural, and urban. When a disaster strikes, each player in the affected region has to roll a die to see what happens to them. Climatopia was developed through close collaboration with more than 60 students and partners since 2020. And using resources and files from its website, the final game design can be made at home. Before we get into our Fantasy Four this week, let's take a second to hear a little from today's episode sponsor, Swagbucks. Are you suffering from a lack of being paid money while you play your mobile games? Are you a gamer who games for free? Are you tired of not earning gift cards or real cash while you have fun? Then you should talk to your doctor about Swagbucks to see if making money while playing games is right for you. Swagbucks allows you to play games and get paid doing it. With Swagbucks, your game time turns into money time, and making money time turns into gaming time. Get paid real cash or gift cards with each game you play. With your mobile phone, you can play games and make money no matter where you are. 
With Swagbucks, you can find an extensive catalog of games for you to play while getting paid. There's a game on their platform for everyone. If you sign up for Swagbucks, you can earn a sign-up bonus of up to $20. Side effects of Swagbucks include fun, playing games a lot, making money, specifically making money while playing games, carving out time for yourself in the day to play games and make money, earning gift cards saying, it's on me, I played a lot of Swagbucks this week to your friends, and many more. Stop playing games for free, download Swagbucks today. Welcome to Fantasy Four. I'm Brianna DeCoster, and I'll be giving you a tour around this beautiful, reasonably priced, four-clip, four-joke segment nestled in a great community. This place is a steal because someone vanished in it, and your ghost may still be possessing those who inhabit its space in its quest for revenge. Let's take a look. In our spacious dining room, you'll find the panic table where a band of space-fearing heroes play a sci-fi horror RPG, Mothership. In the premiere episode, the players face the greatest threat of their lives, a too hard. I've just been like picking up, I can't pick up like the big rocks and put them in the wheelbarrow, but I've just been picking up like pebbles and dust and putting He's them just in. Organizing <laughs> yeah. piles. Yeah, Dragon looks over his shoulder and is like, oh, that's very good. Yes, Thanks. the pile is there. Tunnel B. Yeah. Knock me oh, on the fives. God. Amazing. Yeah, you're fit to make a body safe. Oh, God. <laughs> I invited JPG here because I want to see if it's actually possible to high five so hard I send him to the hospital. I'm sorry, what? JPG, run! Ah! I promise I'll pay for the hospital. I guess it really is possible. In our fabulous kitchen, the stream queen serve us wigs and wyverns, a drag-tastic D and D adventure where everyone can eat, no matter the ingredients. <laughs> uh, you did say not to eat that, and but you have to understand, I'm very hungry. There are I children in that something. pie. <laughs> They're dead. <laughs> Damn, it's the principal. There's a principal too? Did they cook a whole school? Why not? Did JPG make it? No eating hosts. Take away all the fun. Now take a look at this wonderful backyard where we can find thirsty sword lesbians, where no one wants to be the one to take the initiative. Yeah, I was just going to ask, is there a sort of like a, a turn-based thing with us? Because nope, I know I nope. just this is this is this is very much whoever seizes sees the initiative, sees the day, if you will. Let's start with Daisy and then it'll give us time to <laughs> work out what we're doing. Passing the buck. Uh, Passing yeah. baton of my problems <laughs> over there. So Daisy, you're up again. Future I've has problems. Future <laughs> has problems. <laughs> I'll seize the day. Caught by JPG. <laughs> If you'll follow me to the living room, we have dumb friends and dragons who dropped their first episode of Draconic Park this week. Their D&D campaign is modeled after Jurassic Park, but with dragons. Here they are introducing their campaign. Perhaps I should say, welcome to Draconic Park. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez. No eating hosts. Fine. Back to the news. You good? I guess. All right. <laughs> Moving on. This week, Hasbro, owners of Wizards of the Coast, disclosed in a memo to employees that they are laying off close to 1,100 employees, or 20% of their workforce. This follows an announcement in January that they plan to lay off 800 employees in the next 18 to 24 months. So 300 more? Unfortunately, the 1,100 is in addition to the announced 800, so a total of approximately 1,900. Chris Cox, the CEO of Hasbro who announced the layoffs, says his goal for Hasbro is for it to focus on fewer, bigger, better brands. Some employees of Wizards of the Coast have tweeted that they were affected. Included in the layoffs at WotC is content producer at D&D Beyond, Amy Dallin. On an investor call last December, Cox said, The D&D strategy is a broad four-quadrant strategy where we have this powerful brand that has similar awareness, say, to like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. While Hasbro's overall revenue declined 10% year over year, Wizards of the Coast brings in over a billion dollars each year. In the division of the company that runs WotC and digital gaming, revenue is up 40% year over year to 423.6 million, netting a 203.4 million operating profit. 
Cox stated in his memo that the majority of the notifications will happen over the next six months, with the balance occurring over the next year as we tackle the remaining work on our organizational model. And on behalf of everyone here at Tabletop News, our hearts go out to anybody who has been affected or will be affected by these layoffs. Segway? Segway. From CGC, one of the big three card grading companies, comes the announcement of the release of seven Japanese cancelled Pokemon cards from over 10 years ago. Announced by Kevin Murphy, professional card grader and two-time competitor at the Pokemon World Championships, these cards come from the 2011 Japanese Pokemon World Championship Qualifier. These elusive Pokemon cards were originally to be awarded to players who triumphed at the World Championship Qualifier, but went unreleased as the event was cancelled due to Japan's Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. The qualifier was to determine who represents Japan at the Pokemon TCG World Championship, an annual invitation-only event where TCG players gather to see who's the best player in the world. Six of the seven cards were graded as a pristine 10, with the set's remainder being graded a mint 9 all of which is considered to be especially high for cards thought to have been destroyed. While we all want to catch them all, I hey. uh, nailed it, these pieces of Pokemon history will certainly be going for a pretty penny as a blank back Blastoise sold for $360,000 in 2021, tied for the most valuable Pokemon card ever. Hey JBG, can I borrow 360? Yeah, sure, I can. $1,000? I played board games for a living. Oh. I mean, we could sell my wife's ring. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> this is binding contract. <laughs> That's enough of us blabbering on and on because it's time for news, news from your table, where we share the news from your games. Today's news from your table comes to us from Nathanix on our Discord channel. They write, In the most recent session of our Strixhaven home game, our party got involved in tagging magical mascots for the upcoming Mage Tower tournament. My tiny owl and bard and the warforged warlock went one way, the half-elf rogue and the human wizard went the other. The rogue and the wizard ran into an Ankeg nest, and the fight went poorly with the wizard being dragged underground into the burrow. Oh, that's... no... no thank you. Ankegs... Gross looking. Mm -hmm. They look like the Starship Trooper aliens. Oh yeah, yeah they do. I can't imagine their nest. They spray acid though, so oh, it might be clean. that's nice. It's probably clean. Yeah, probably not. It's probably gross like the alien queen's lair. Mm. The Bard and the Warlock mounted a rescue mission with the Warlock and Rogue fighting off the Ankeg, whilst Nathanix's Bard scrambled into the collapsing tunnel to save the wizard. A couple of Nat Ones later... Ooh, Nat Ones. I'm very familiar. I know, they just threw that in there pretty casually. A couple of Nat Ones later, and the Bard suddenly needed rescuing as she struggled to hold up the tunnel with her wings. As the dirt and stone fell around them, threatening to bury them alive, the wizard had no choice but to go to their last resort and called upon a strange otherworldly power so far unknown to their fellow players. The wizard scooped up their poor bird bard in his arms and together they exploded up out of the ground like a sandworm jetting up in a spray of earth to safety. It seems there's more to this wizard than meets the eye. What? Is there? Is is there more? Well, I, I don't know. You're, you're gonna have to ask Nathanix on our Discord. Sorry. That's it for the news this week. Thanks for watching Tabletop News, your official stop for all things tabletop. Be sure to check out our website where we have tons of discount codes and deals from our sponsors. Thanks to Swagbucks for sponsoring this episode. Download Swagbucks now to start earning real cash for free by playing mobile games. New members get a sign-up bonus of up to $20 using our link. Catch new episodes of Tabletop News Thursdays on YouTube. Don't forget to ring that bell, like, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments which story was your favorite this week and let us know what you want to see on the show. I'm Xander. And I'm JPG. See, see you, you next week. week.